Shalom, call halal, Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Rakakodash. Double honors to the elders and apostles of great midstone who taught me this truth of Muel. Salutation and citations to the brothers out there that are laboring and pushing this truth in truth and in sincerity and in charity, risking their lives and their freedom to do so. To you I say Shalom, to the Akim and to the Akwaf. That be you, brothers and sisters. I don't want to have to zap. As I say, Lord willing, hopefully by the end of this lesson, you'll be edified. This is your brother Amawan Ibad from the GMS Miami camp. Back again with another lesson to the spirit and power of Yahweh, Bahasham Yahweh Shai, to feed the lambs of Yahweh. <coughs> Yahweh Shai, as commanded. <coughs> And now, <clears throat> this lesson today is going to be entitled, It is the Lord that fights our battles. Okay? It is the Lord that fights our battle. Okay? Battles. Okay? That's <clears throat> what the Lord uh, put on my spirit to do today. Okay? So, to what do you have, Bashim Yahushai, for giving me the spirit to do this lesson? Okay? And now... <clears throat> Yeah, man, all through the scriptures, um, we see accounts, okay, and it's, it's, it's made known that, all right, the Most High fights for his portion and his people, okay, all right, his heritage, okay, um, like I said, it's, it's uh, all through the scriptures, man, <clears throat> okay, and, um, we're going to get some accounts and some precepts. And Lord willing, by the end of this lesson, you'll be edified. So we're going to start off in the book of um, Exodus. Exodus, the 14th chapter. This is the account with uh, uh, all right, the children of Israel and uh, Pharaoh and the Egyptians. Okay? Now, you know the story where, uh, you know, the Lord... Uh, sent Moses all right into Egypt to Pharaoh to tell him to let his people go all right but the Lord hardened his heart that he won't let him go, let the people go so soon so immediately all right he hardened his heart all right so he could magnify his name in the earth okay show his power in the earth man okay and um he fought for the children of Israel, man. His heritage. Okay? Because it, it, it is he. All right? The Lord that fights our battles. All right? It is the Lord that fights our battles, man. Okay? So let's get this first account. And then we're going to we uh, get three accounts. All right? We're going to get three accounts. We're going to get a count in Exodus, a count in the book of uh, Judges, an account of the book of uh, Joshua. Then we're going to close it up with a few precepts. All right, so let's get Exodus 14. This is Exodus 14. We're going to jump in here at verse 13. Okay. This is where, uh, you know, uh, the Lord had put the, the heart in Pharaoh's heart, all right, for him to uh, pursue after, okay, the children of Israel. Okay. Um, so... This is going to show you show you how the Lord all right, fights for us, man. I'm going to read from verse 13. It says, um, so the people who were standing there, they, they was afraid because they see, all right, the Egyptians, all right, uh, was, 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 was gaining ground and getting close to them. So I know uh, the, the, the majority of our people were so afraid, you know. So it says, verse 13, Moses said unto the people, it's like it says, and Moses said unto the people, fear ye not and stand still and see the salvation of the Lord, which he will show to you today. For the Egyptians whom ye have seen today, ye shall see them again no more forever. You see, verse 14, it says, the Lord shall fight for you okay going back to the title of the lesson it is the lord that fights our battles okay it says the lord shall fight for you 
and ye shall hold your peace. Okay. Reading on it says, And the Lord said unto Moses, Wherefore criest thou unto me? Speak unto the children of Israel that they go forward, but let but lift lift thou up thy rod and stretch out thine hand over the sea, and divide it, and the children of Israel shall go on dry ground through the midst of the sea. You see? So here is the Lord doing a, 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 a wonderful work, all right? A mighty act, all right? For, the, for his people, man. Read now, it says, and, and I, it's like, it's like in verse 17, Exodus 14 and 17 says, And I, behold, I will harden the hearts of the Egyptians, and they shall follow them, and I will get me honor, and it's like it says, and I will get me honor upon Pharaoh, and upon all his hosts, and upon his chariots, and upon his horsemen. Right, so Lord hardened his heart to pursue after the children of Israel, all right, so he could destroy him. Because at, at, at that time, the Pharaoh, Pharaoh was, was like a, 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 a god in the earth, all right? Lowercase g god, most definitely. He's not the heavenly father, all right? This is the Most High doing a wonderful act. All right, it says, uh, verse 18, And the Egyptians shall know that I am Yahweh, when I have gotten me honor upon Pharaoh, and upon his chariots, and upon his horsemen. It says, And the angel of the Lord, it's like it says, The angel of the Most High, which went before the camp of Israel, removed and went behind them, and the pillar of the cloud went from before their face, and stood behind them, and it came between the camp of the Egyptians and the camp of Israel. And it was a cloud and darkness to them, but it gave light by night to these. See, see all the wonderful works the Lord was doing, using the angels. It says so that one it says so that the one come not near the other all the night. And Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and the Lord caused the sea to go back by a strong east wind all that night, and made the sea dry land. And the waters were divided. It says, And the children of Israel went into the midst of the sea upon the dry ground, and the waters were and the waters were a wall unto them on the right hand and on the left. See, there's a mighty work being done here from the most high. It says, And the Egyptians pursued and went in after them to the midst of the sea, even all Pharaoh's horses, his chariots, and his horsemen. It says, and it came to pass that in the morning watch, the Lord looked unto the host of the Egyptians through the pillar of fire and of the cloud and troubled the host of the Egyptians, right? And took off their chariot wheels that they drave them heavily. So that the Egyptians said, let us flee from the face of Israel. For the Lord fighted for them against the Egyptians, right? It's the Lord that fight, fights our battles, man. You see? It says, for the Lord fighteth for them against the Egyptians, right? The Lord is the Lord that's, that's uh, 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 fighting this battle, man. All right? You see? It says, um, and the Lord said unto Moses, stretch out thine hand over the sea, that the waters may come again upon the Egyptians and upon their chariots and upon and upon their horsemen. And Moses stretched forth his hand over the sea, and the sea returned to his strength like it, and the sea returned to his strength when the morning appeared, and the Egyptians fled against it, and the Lord overthrew the Egyptians in the midst in the midst of the sea. And the waters returned and covered the chariots and the horsemen and all the hosts of Pharaoh that came into the sea after them. They remained not so much as one of them. See? So they all were drowned. They all were, they all were, 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 were uh, deleted in the, in the sea, man, chasing after Israel. Okay? It says, verse 29, But the children of Israel walked upon dry land in the midst of the sea, and the waters were were a wall unto them on the right hand and unto the left. Thus 
The Lord saved Israel that day out of the hand of the Egyptians, and Israel saw the Egyptians dead upon the seashore. And Israel saw that great work, see? And Israel saw that great work which the Lord did upon the Egyptians, and the people feared the Lord and believed the Lord and his servant Moses. See? That that was a mighty victory, man, for for, 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 for the children of Israel, man. Okay? And who did it? The Lord, man. He magnified his name in the earth. Okay? By 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 overthrowing Pharaoh and his army, man, and, and delivering and saving Israel, his people. You see? So that's an account where the Lord, all right, uh fighting our battles, man. It is the Lord that fight our battles. Okay, let's get the next account. Let's go to the book of Judges. Okay. All right. That's why that's that's why the scripture says to strive, strive for the truth unto death, and the Lord shall fight for thee. You know, the Lord, the Lord wants you to keep his, his law standards, start, uh, statutes and commandments to the best of your ability, man. All right, and, 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 and walk, it, walk in the way of righteousness. You know, the, the scriptures say, uh, when a man's ways please the Lord, he make it even his enemies to be at peace with him. Okay, so you got to walk in a, in a pleasing way in, in, in the sight of the Lord. You know, doing the things that's pleasing in his eyesight. Our forefather Enoch said, the scriptures say his testimony was that he pleased the Lord. Therefore, all right, he, 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 he was, he was uh, translated, man. He was never found. He was beamed up. All right, let's get uh, the book of Judges. Let's get the account with Gideon when, we, when, when, when uh, it was a battle between the, 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 the Midianites, all right, and the children of Israel. Um, judges, let's get Judges. Right here. The book of Judges, chapter uh, chapter one, and we're gonna read. We're gonna read verse down to verse seven. Okay. All right. This is uh, Judges chapter seven and verse one. It says, "Then Jerub, Jerubbaal, who is Gideon, and all the people that were with him, rose up early and pitched beside the wall of Harod, so that the, the the hosts of the Midianites were on the north side of them, by the hill of Morah in the valley. And the Lord said unto Gideon, and this is a very interesting story, just to show you how, like how the." the the Lord uses under the underdog, okay? But at the same time, it's by the power of the Lord. He's the one that's fighting the battle for you, okay? He sets up everything, you know? The Lord is, his Lord is in control of everything, all right? So listen to this story. It's an account. It's an account, all right? Real life story. It says, um, I'm at verse 2, And the Lord said unto Gideon, The people that are with thee, are too many. So they had like, when you read the story, it's almost like 30 of our people, all right, Israelites. It, it was like 32,000 of them. So as we read, we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna, we're gonna do the numbers real quick. It says, And the Lord said unto Gideon, The people that are with thee are too many for, for me to give the Midianites into their hands, lest Israel vaunt themselves against me, saying, My own hand hath saved me. So, it was it was like thirty two thousand according to when you read this according to what it says it was like thirty two thousand, so the Lord saying that number is too much, okay because Israel they're gonna feel in their mind that 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 they win this battle of their own so the Lord wanted to take the numbers down so when you read on it says now therefore go, go to proclaiming the heirs of the people saying whosoever is fearful and afraid let him return and depart early from Mount Gilead. And their return of the people, 20 and 2,000, right? So 22,000 people return. The Lord say, if you're afraid, all right, if you're fearful, return. He's he, 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 he trying to get the numbers down so Israel don't, don't believe it's, if, when they win this, this victory the Lord about to give them that they did it of their own strength or their own power. So he's taking the numbers down, showing you that it's of the Lord. It's, it's him who's fighting the battle for you. Okay, 
It says, Now therefore go to proclaim in the ears of the people, say, Whosoever is fearful and afraid, let him return and depart early from Mount Gilead. And there returned of the people twenty and two thousand, and there remained ten thousand. So that's how I get the number by reading this according to this the scripture, yeah, this chapter, chapter seven, George, uh, Judges chapter seven. So that twenty-two, the twenty-two thousand that returned, right, and what remained ten thousand. So that's that's uh, thirty-two thousand altogether. Let's put it all together, right? So twenty-two. Return and it remain ten thousand, right? It says, it says, and there re and there return of the people twenty and two thousand, and there remained ten thousand, right? Now watch this. Out of this ten thousand, the Lord, the Most High, want to lower the number even lower. So let's read verse four. It says, and the Lord said unto Gideon, the people are yet too many. Bring them down unto the water, and I will try them for thee there. And it shall be that of whom I say unto thee, this shall go with thee, the same shall go with thee. And of whosoever I say unto thee, this shall not go with thee, the same shall not go with thee. Right? So watch how we coming from like 32,000. Watch, watch how the Lord will bring the number down to, to the specific number. So it says, verse 5, so he, brought the, so he brought down the people unto the water, and the Lord said unto Gideon, Every one that lappeth of the water with his tongue as a dog lappeth, him shalt thou set by himself. Likewise, every one that boweth down upon his knees to drink. Okay, so the ones that lap it like a dog, the one, the one that lap it, of the water with his tongue like as a dog lappeth, him shall thou set by himself. Likewise, everyone that boweth down upon his knees to drink. So they're being separated, right? It says, verse 6, And the number of them that lapped, putting their hand to their mouth, were three hundred men. It says, But all the rest of the people bowed down upon their knees to drink water, Right? Verse 7, it says, And the Lord said unto Gideon, By the three hundred men that lapped will I save you. You see? And the Lord said unto Gideon, By the three hundred men that lapped will I save you. So out of ten thousand, the ten thousand that remain, three hundred of them the Lord choose. Okay? So that means, say, nine thousand, all right? Seven hundred uh, 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 men, <laughs> right? <laughs> Get put aside, man. The Lord said you're going to use 300 men for this battle against the Midianites. Right? So that's, so so they can know it ain't, it ain't by their strength. It's the Lord that's doing it. It is it is the Lord that fights our battles, man. It says, And the Lord said unto Gideon, uh, Judges 7, chapter 7, verse 7, And the Lord said unto Gideon, By the 300 men that lapped will I save you and deliver the Midianites into thine hand and let all the other people go, every man unto his place. See, the Lord sent them away, man. Okay, so out of 32,000, basically, the Lord pick out 300 men. You see that? So, there you go. It, it's the Lord that fights our battle, man. Our battles, okay? And let's get the book of, uh, we're going to get one more account and get a few precepts and we're going to close it up. Let's go to the book of Judges. All right, this is the time when Joshua was getting up in age, you know, you know, after Moses. All right, uh, 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 Joshua was in his stead, you know, Joshua set up Moses, the Lord, you know, uh, had Joshua to, uh, to take over after Moses, okay? So when Joshua now was uh, coming up in age, right, this is a count. We're going to get it real quick. Joshua chapter 23 and uh, verse, we're going to start at verse 1. Read down to verse 10. It says, And it came to pass a long time after that the Lord had given rest unto Israel from all their enemies round about, that Joshua waxed old and stricken in age. It says, And Joshua called for all Israel and for all their elders and for their heads and for their heads and for all their judges and for and for the officers, and said unto them, I am old and stricken in age. 
It says, and ye have seen all the Lord. It says, and ye have seen all that the Lord your God had done unto all these nations before you. See? For the Lord your God is he that hath fought for you. There you go. Let me read this again. Joshua chapter 23. Right? Joshua chapter 23 and verse 3. It says, and ye have seen all that the Lord your God had done unto all these nations because of you. For the Lord your God is he that hath fought for you. So it's the Lord, man. It is, it is the Lord that fights our battles. Okay? It says, verse 4. It says, Behold, I have divided unto you by lot these nations that remain to be in an, an inheritance for your tribes from Jordan with all the nations that I have cut off, even unto the great sea westward. It says, And the Lord your God, he shall expel them from before you and drive them from out of your sight, and ye shall possess their land, as the Lord your power hath promised unto you. Be ye therefore very courageous to keep and to do all that is written in the book of the law of Moses, that ye turn not aside therefrom to the right hand or to the left. It says, That ye come not among these nations, these that remain among you, Neither make mention of the name of their gods, nor cause to swear by them. Neither serve them, nor bow yourselves unto them. But cleave unto Yahweh your power, as ye have done unto this day. It says, For the Lord, he had driven out from before you great nations and strong. But as for you, no man had been able to stand before you unto this day. Why? Because the Lord is fighting the battles, man. All right? It says, one man of you shall chase a thousand for the Lord your God. He it is that fighted for you as he had promised you. See, the Lord fights our battles, man. It's no going around it. Okay. There ain't no going around it, man. Let's get a, uh, see, all you got to do is, 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 is follow the law, statutes, and commandments. All right. To the best of your ability. All right. As, as you know, right now, we're not sovereign. Okay. But if you adhere to the words of the Lord, let me get a preset. If you adhere to the words and you listen and you obey, you're going to find out. Or let me just get the scripture. Um, this is Exodus chapter 23. So Exodus chapter 23, uh, verse 22. It says, but if thou shall indeed obey his voice, this is all we have to do, and do all that I speak, then will I be an enemy unto thine enemies and an adversary unto thine adversaries. See, the Lord is going to fight your battles, man. All you got to do is take heed to his words. Do the right thing. You know, the scriptures, the scriptures tell you that he that touches you touched the apple of my eye, man. We the Lord's people. You see? We the Lord's people, man. Okay? So, at the end of the day, we know, say, the, the Lord, the, 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 the Savior, our Lord, Yahusha is coming back because the Heavenly Father is going to send His Son, all right, to once more, this is a future prophecy, the return of the Lord, to fight our battles, man. You see? Um, let's, uh, let's get Isaiah. Because this speaks to the time that we're in right now, what we're doing right now. We're crying out, like as in ancient Egypt, we was crying out. And the Lord heard, all right, and sent Moses to Pharaoh, right, to the, the, to let his people go, all right. And those cries, those cries uh, went up into the heavens, and the Lord heard, man. Okay, just like in these times, we're crying out. This is Isaiah chapter nineteen and verse nineteen. This is what's happening right now, and what's what the Lord is going to do. It says, Isaiah chapter 19 and verse 19, it says, In that day shall there be an altar to the Lord in the midst of the land of Egypt. Now, this is not talking about ancient Egypt. This is talking about now. This word Egypt is a, is a cold word for America. Because Revelation 11 chapter and the 8 verse tell you how um, uh, this place is, uh, is, 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 is likened unto spiritual Egypt. Okay? So, it's, it's, it's known as spiritual Egypt. All right, so this is not talking about ancient Egypt. This is a future prophecy that's going on right now. It says, In that day shall there be an altar to the Lord in the midst of the land of Egypt, 
and a pillar at the border thereof to the Lord. And it shall be for a sign and for a witness unto the Lord of hosts in the land of Egypt, right? Meaning the prophets who, who, who preach in this word, okay? It says, for they shall cry unto the Lord because of the oppressors, and he shall send them a savior, right? Which is our Lord, Yahweh Shai, and a great one, and he shall deliver them. See? So the scriptures tell you how all right, uh, he's going to be wearing many crowns upon his head because he's coming to subjugate nations, man. You can read uh, 1 Corinthians, the 15th chapter, uh, beginning at the 24th verse. Uh, see, uh, Revelation 11 and 15. The kingdoms, the, the, the kingdoms of this world have become the, 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 the kingdoms uh, of our Lord. Okay, roughly paraphrasing it. You see? So, at the end of the day, we don't, we don't got to do much. All we got to do is wait upon the Lord. Preach this word and wait upon the Lord. Because that's what we're instructed to do. To wait upon the Lord. Let's, let's get that. Uh, you see, because it is Him. All right? If you just read it, he, He's going to save. The Lord is going to send us a Savior and a great one. The Heavenly Father is going to send His Son, man. All right? So we ain't got to do nothing other than to preach this word. All right? And wait upon the Lord. Uh... What's that? Zephaniah? Zephaniah 3 and 8. It says, Therefore wait ye upon me, said the Lord, until the day that I rise up to the prey. For my determination is to gather the nations that I may assemble the kingdoms to pour upon them mine indignation, even my fierce anger. For all the earth shall be devoured with the fire of my jealousy. So yeah, the Lord coming back to take vengeance, man. And he tell you that he's not going to meet you as a man. See, I see Isaiah the 47 chapter. I want to say the third verse. All right? You see? So, yeah, it's no going around it. And, and, and how, how, how he's going to do it, as birds fly in the scriptures say, with the word ignorantly called UFOs, they are the chariots of Israel, man. Okay? And the Lord is coming with the host of heaven, man. The angels. Okay? The holy host. Um, this is the book of... Uh, Isaiah chapter 31 and verse 5. We're getting ready to close out. We've got one more precept after this one. We can close it out. And it says, As birds flying, so will the Lord of hosts defend Jerusalem. Jerusalem is a people before it's a place. All right. It says, As birds flying, so will the Lord of hosts defend Jerusalem. Defending also, he will deliver it. And passing over, he will preserve it. Okay. So remember that the Heavenly Father is going to send his son, man. All right. And he's going to, he's going to, he's going to, uh, He's going to deliver the elect. You see? He's going to uh, he's going to fight our battle, man. You see? Um, yeah. <laughs> so I'm going to get one more. We can close it on the book of Jeremiah. All right? Jeremiah, the uh, 16th chapter. We're going to jump in here at the 14th verse. Now, showing you again that this is not... You can mention Egypt, Right? It's going to mention Egypt a few times, I think twice in these two lines right here. But one is speaking of ancient Egypt, right? And one, the other one is speaking of America, modern day Egypt, spiritual Egypt. This is uh, Jeremiah 16 and verse 14. It says, Therefore, behold, the days come, said the Lord, that it shall no more be said that the Lord liveth that brought up the children of Israel out of the land of Egypt. Now that's speaking of ancient Egypt. Verse 15, it says, But the Lord liveth that brought up the children of Israel from the land of the north. Okay, I think it only said once. So lucky. I thought it says twice in here. The land of the north, which is America. Okay. But it's known as spiritual Egypt. It says, so so lucky. It says, but verse 15, it says, But the Lord liveth that brought up the children of Israel from the land of the north. And from all the lands whither he had driven them, and I will bring them again into their land that I gave unto their fathers. Okay, so the land of the north and this precept is talking about America, man. All right, uh, Babylon the Great, the daughter of Babylon, a.k.a. All right, uh, spiritual Egypt. All right, so that's, that's, that's going to be a, a mighty deliverance by way of the Lord fighting uh, 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 the battle, uh, battles, man. Okay, so yeah, 
I'm going to end the video there, Lord, when you edify, giving all honor, glory, and praises unto Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Rakakadash. Double honors to the elders and apostles of Great Millstone who taught me the truth and rule well. Salutation and salutations to the brothers out there that are laboring and pushing this truth in truth and in sincerity and in charity, risking their lives and their freedom to do so. Until the next time, with that, Shalom.